the most epic and dumbest D&D campaign ever. Don't rule out any backstory from players. Even with the most minimal amount of information, given an amazing playgroup, you might still come up with one of your best campaigns to date. So about eight months ago, I started a new job, made some new friends at work, and got started on what may be my favorite adventure to DM participate in to date. I would not have guessed this when we were first getting started. The group consisted of four members, two who had some moderate experience with D&D and two that were completely new. Since we had over half new players and just through general discussions of the game, I could tell that maybe an adventuring group where a straight-up murder hobo play would be possible and would probably work out best. It seemed to be the way the players were going to be playing regardless, but this would give everyone a chance to get a feel for the game mechanics without overly having to worry about having the guards stop by every five minutes. As I was kind of voicing these thoughts, the group decided they would be quite alright playing an evil adventuring group. Cool. Something I've also never done before. So let's do this. Enter Character Creation. I like to build my campaigns around characters, if at all possible. Everyone knows it's way cooler if the bad guy is your cleric's long-lost brother, rather than generic evil guy number 7. So I waited for everyone to let them know what was up. Wounded Knee, the Gnome Bard. Go to every bar in every town, get drunk at every bar, get thrown out of every bar. Tickles the half-orc sorcerer. Money and power. Power and money. Oh, and also power and money. And money and power. Also, I used to know demons, I guess. And these were the two that had played before. Sassy Pants the Druid and her wolf Fluffy. She has a dog and hates cats. And cat people. And of course, Patrick the Barbarian. I really want to kill things. Like all the things. This is the part where I cried a little. What was I supposed to do with this? At least they sounded evil, but for real, I thought I was doomed. Until luckily, I had a little inspiration from my old friend, Whiskey. Enter the Tavern of Taverns. Our group of adventurers start out like any other, in a tavern. But they own this one. The druid bartends the place using her grumpy wolf pet to make sure people pay. The barbarian works as the bouncer and does the heavy lifting when needed. The sorcerer is the little bar's main attraction performing magic shows every night. They are kind of accompanied by music from the bard in between drinks, at least up until the point he passes out. Now, this isn't the nicest bar in town, but it is the group's bar, and the name of this establishment? The Shady Tavern, deemed as such by the players. So yeah, it's not the nicest, or the cleanest, or the one with the best drinks, or patrons, or anything, but they're cheap. Boy, are they cheap. This is bad news for the orphanage. Sadly for them, it's the only place in town where they can afford food and a show. Enter the first session. Our adventurers start out performing a show the night the orphans visit. Each member had a set of goals they had to accomplish in some fashion. It started out with Tickles opening up for the night. He kindly asked one of the orphans to come up on stage. He asks for her teddy bear, proceeds to tear it in half, and she of course starts crying. After a quick check of the rulebook, we deem he is standing on stage for less than 10 minutes, casting Mending on her toy, while she quietly cries and everyone is uncomfortably watching. The show is off to a much better start than I could have ever imagined. While this is happening, the druid decides now would be a good time to serve up the food and drink. And why should she be bothered to change up the standard order? These aren't kings, they're orphans. They don't deserve extra work from her. Beer and mutton for everyone, children included. Sadly for our group, the kids can't really hold their drinks. They start to get a little riled up. The bard stops playing music and kind of stands up, as well as he can, and does his best to kind of get the kids to hush, at least until he notices another drink. This is a relatively ineffective plan of action since it lasts all about 10 seconds. The nun in charge of these orphans sees this as quickly deteriorating situation and runs over to see what the problem is. Our barbarian friend yells his battle cry of, No refunds! and shoves her out of the way that this is a typical angry bar patron coming to rough up his friend, Wounded Knee, after the drunk probably did something to anger them, which he often does. Things quickly spiral out of control. Patrick feels like maybe he can help a bit more by quieting the children down. While Patrick may not be the most intelligent member of the group, he does know a few things, such as the fact that when someone is unconscious after he hits them, they are generally pretty quiet. Even drunk children know to get out of the way of a raging barbarian. Wounded Knee finishes the drink he found and realizes he should probably help out. He starts a bardic performance to grab the attention of at least a few of the kids. Tickles takes that as his cue for the next of his signature tricks. Burning hands. Well, at least a fourth of the patrons, 
remember mostly orphans and nuns this night, aren't freaking out about the fire that is starting to engulf the bar at this point, due to being unconscious. People start trying to leave, without full payment no less. Sassy Pants is having none of that. She sends Fluffy to angrily bite on anyone who doesn't do what she wants. This will be happening frequently. The sorcerer tries to melt the door with an acid splash to slow down all these sudden tiny thieves, and at least blocks the exit for a little while with a pool of acid. The barbarian has taken out a good chunk of the children by this point. Fluffy has been doing her share of the work. The fire is starting to finish off what is left, pretty much just the bardically dazed children. Of course, the screams are heard, the cries for the guards are being sent out, and the nun is making a break for it with as many children as she can possibly save. Everyone runs outside. The nun is weeping in the courtyard for this travesty against the gods, and the guards are quickly approaching. The sorcerer is quick on his feet and tries to bluff. That nun is actually a sorcerer terrorizing our bar. I'm the real nun, and that is the sorcerer. And it turns out these guards are idiots. Two of the three henchmen guards buy his bluff, as does the leader. Roll for initiative. Round one, the first minion gets focused down and dies before he can warn the others that they are being super, super stupid. Round two. The leader and another guard managed to kill the nun for the group. I honestly thought I was losing my mind a little bit at this point. Round 3. The group has dealt with the guards. Game over. They start doing their best to deal with the fire, clean up the bodies and whatnot. Then they settle in for a good night's rest after a hard day's work. This was supposed to be pretty difficult. Well, remember how I mentioned the sorcerer had a little bit of a past with demons? The demons behind some of his powers had been paying attention to him. And this attention, plus all of the orphan and nun murdering, brought more demonic attention. As the sky began to darken, a large dome of fire started to encircle the shady tavern. The party all noticed too late to try to make a break for it. It got brighter and brighter until... They all awoke in a strange place. The ground around the shady tavern caught off at sharp angles, and only fire was visible beyond, to both the west and the north. They could see a few buildings off in the distance to the east and the south. After doing some searching, they were able to find a note. We are impressed with the amount of evil potential this group has proven itself to possess. We have decided you are worthy of both a reward and a test. Your bar has been transported to the Tavern of Taverns, a plane of existence created by the Demon Lords as a place to unwind. This is an entire plane of existence dedicated to drinking and debauchery. Every plot of land is set aside for a new and exciting tavern, and all of these join together to form a mega tavern. Welcome to the Tavern of Taverns. Explore this place, enjoy what it has to offer, and depending on how well you perform, perhaps your reward will be even greater. Now, this is the point in the campaign after their first major encounter. A DM would hope that a group might reflect, examine the actions that had gotten them there, the moral implications, or at least the tactics involved. Neat! A demon world! Let's go east! They continue this damn the consequences and I don't have feelings style for basically the whole campaign. I was both impressed and slightly scared how easily they fell into the evil role. First stop, the Barbarian Cairn. This was a barbarian cave graveyard turned party bar. Not an issue for anyone in the party. I was kind of hoping that someone would at least have to consider literally dancing on someone's grave. But when the group finds out that there's a dance contest, everyone participates immediately. Patrick gets a little bit bored after a few rounds of desecrating the graves of his ancestors and decides to punch the competition. Sassy Pants and Fluffy do some lovely wolf druid duet dancing. Tickles dances rather intimidatingly, as is his style for most things. In the end, though, Wounded Knee's bardic dexterity ends up winning him the day, and he spends the night enjoying some free drinks, and also a ring of swimming that was part of the prize for winning. But all he really cares about is the drinks. Next stop, Hunter's Delight, a bar deep in the forest. This was used to introduce the players to traps and skill check. There were some bear traps and they ended up getting lost for a while. They eventually found the bar, got drunk, and decided it was time to move on after some punching. Tickles decided he didn't want to get lost in the forest again, and how did he decide to make this happen? Want to see a magic trick? Which is his version of burning hands. It's much easier to walk back when there is no forest. Yes, there were dead patrons and forest dwellers, but we're here to impress demons, right? So who cares? Next up, Bakken's Hut. This is a small bar run out of a dude's cottage. It was pretty run down. He's kind of crazy, but he promises extra of his special brew if the party will go get some ingredients for him. After Tickles intimidates for a bit and Wounded Knee yells at him to make sure he doesn't have any drinks he can get now, the group decides to help out. Because hey, more drinks. I was just pleased they decided to spare him long enough to actually kind of talk to him. Stop 4. 
the spider's nest. This is a bar set up in an old, rundown industrial warehouse. Bones and dust and cobwebs are everywhere. This bar is for actual spiders. I don't know what you were expecting, giant spider bartender says. The sign was very clear. Roll for initiative, light combat, not too much trouble. But Sassy Pants and Fluffy were slightly grossed out a couple of times through all the squish. Stop 5. The Gold Mine This is exactly what it sounds like. An active gold mine turned into a bar. The party takes a chance to knock down some gold schlager, enjoy a little of that fancy dessert that Jack likes on 30 Rock, and various other gold miner themed food and drink. There were some veins of fool's gold along the walls, and if the party were to fail an attempt to appraise it, then try to mine it, there was going to be an explosion due to a gas buildup from the poor mining ventilation. I am rather proud to say the party was being fairly careful and thinking ahead and didn't remotely fall for it. The next bar, The Cellar. This became one of my favorite bars of the entire adventure, and one of the most hated bars for the group. The Cellar is basically a large liquor shop with a built-in bar, rows and rows of whiskeys, wines, vodka, beer, you name it. Think of a Walmart-sized building, but they only sell alcohol. As the PCs are walking down one of the aisles towards the bar, the floor caves in. Suddenly, they are in the cellar's cellar. I look around for anything useful, said Tick. You see some large barrels used for storing wine, basically a large vat. Cannonball! Wounded Knee shouted, jumping into one of the vats. These are pretty big vats, probably twice the height of Wounded Knee. Since he was just chugging it down too, there would have been a decent chance he would have drowned, but luckily for him, he was the one who won the dance contest and wound up with the ring of swimming. He basically drinks as much as he can and ends up floating about three-fourths away into the barrel, the ring of swimming keeping him afloat, but he's now stuck since he's too drunk and too short to get himself out. Sassy Pants and Fluffy walk over to try and help deal with the situation while Tickles and Patrick try to reason out an exit plan. They first try to push the barrel over. No luck, due to a combination of not having the right stats for this and bad roll. If we get more of the liquid out of the barrel, will we be more likely to knock it over? asks Sassy Pants. She has herself quite a few nice little drinks and eventually gets the ratio down enough that she can push it over. So now, half the party has basically become dead weight. Patrick and Tickles are having a little better luck. One of them has a rope, and they are taking turns trying to catch it on one of the shelves on the floor above them. After some hilariously bad rolls, they finally manage to get it kind of stuck up there. With some help from Tickles, Patrick manages to climb up the rope and better secure it so that the others can start to climb out. The group decides that since Tickles is pretty large, he should probably be the last to go out so that everyone can help pull him up and out and make a little bit more secure when he climbs up. So it's decided. Sassy Pants should go first. She gets about halfway up, gets a case of the giggles, and slides back down the rope. This doesn't phase her. She gets back up, dusts herself off, and attempts for a second time. This time, Tickles is trying to provide assistance and give her a little boost, which is working out fairly well for them. Sadly, Wounded Knee has gotten bored waiting and decides it's his turn to climb the rope. Sassy Pants gets a quarter of the way up before he starts causing problems. Then Wounded Knee climbed over Sassy Pants and used her face for traction. She goes down, and since he was using her face as footing, he goes down with her, their combined weight knocking Tickles down as well. The entire group kind of dusts themselves off, and Tickles decides he has had enough and does his best to corral Wounded Knee in one of the corners to allow Sassy Pants to climb up on her own, which she eventually manages to do. The group wants to get Wounded Knee out first, but in his current state, it's decided he probably wouldn't actually be that much help. So Tickles starts to climb. It's going pretty well, and he's about halfway up the rope, but this has given Wounded Knee enough time to realize he is no longer being herded. He doesn't get on Tickles' face this time, but he is enough of a detriment that they both fall to the floor. Tickles takes a moment to rethink the situation and comes up with a rather clever solution to this, and a future problem. He ties Wounded Knee up with the bottom section of the rope. He probably wasn't going to be able to climb out on his own anyways, so they would have had to find a way to pull him up eventually. With the help from a little gnome step stool, he finds it much easier to climb out of the hole. He gets out, the group pulls Wounded Knee up and unties him, and this horrible ordeal is over. This was supposed to be a quick 5-10 to 10 minute encounter, showing the party how to use skills, the environment around them to solve problems, but ended up being about 20-30 to 30 minutes due to terrible rolls and hilarity. It was rather glorious. I'm not sure what the deal is with this group, but we just have a problem with sellers. It actually carried over into the next campaign we are currently playing. The party's celebrating, overcoming their first real puzzle. They did it. Wounded Knee got some nice drinks and got to punch someone, which is all he ever wants. So what if it happens to be Tickles and Sassy Pants? Sassy Pants had some nice drinks and had some fun exploring the area, figuring out a way to save Wounded Knee. 
Patrick is feeling like a beast, using his physical prowess to escape the situation and help the others out of the terrible, terrible darkness. And to top it all off, Tickles is feeling fairly clever for figuring out a solution to the problem. Everyone is feeling great and accomplished. The group starts to walk over to the bar for some intimidating and celebrating, when suddenly, loud panicked barking. No one remembered to bring up Fluffy. Luckily, the group was smart and only lowered Patrick down to hold on to Fluffy as he was pulled back up to the group. But this was such an amazing moment, watching all of their faces as they realized they had come so far, but had forgotten such an important and obvious element that they could bring all their hard work crumbling down was truly just beautiful. Luckily for them, they came up with a great solution that only slightly undid their work, and they got to go party at the bar as planned after only a minor setback. After some celebrating for overcoming the hardest encounter to date, the party decided it's time to get out of this accursed cellar bar, time to move on to somewhere much nicer and less problematic. They rather carefully head out to their first stop. Mexico Moe's Mexico Moe's has actually had a little bit of a history with the adventurers. Believe it or not, most of you have probably been to a Mexico Moe's or some incarnation of it, and so had the shady tavern owners. Mexico Moe's is your stereotypical chain restaurant and bar. You know the ones. Same setup, decorations, menus, and server uniform, no matter which town you go to them in. Albeit, Mexico Moe's has at least a Mexican flair to it. Just like all of you have dealt with the Mexico Moe's, so had all the PCs. Mexico Moe's was actually the only bar in their hometown, which technically made them rivals. Though that part may have been a bit one-sided. They were none too happy to see the corporate arm of their successful bar in the town had reached all the way into the demonic realm. Though really, I suppose that may not be too surprising. Anyways, they decided they were going to put a stop to it. That didn't mean they weren't going to get some drinks, though. So they did. Wounded Knee, Sassy Pants, Fluffy, and Patrick sat down to enjoy their drinks. Tickles decides it's time to show the good patrons of Mexico Moe's just what they're missing by going to an inferior bar. Tickles jumped onto a table and asked the patrons for a volunteer. The manager of the place started towards him to try and stop whatever was going on before he could get out of hand. But Patrick and the others stopped them before they could intervene. Tickles looked around the room then centered on a man and a woman, apparently enjoying a date night. Hey, you two want to see a magic trick? Tickles walked over to this poor couple, who were about to have a very different evening than they had originally planned. Though, I guess since they are in the realm of demons, I won't feel bad for them. Well, not too bad anyways. The man looked slightly confused at first, but decided it would probably be best just to play along and hope this ends quickly. This is a mistake. I take a second and ask the player what Tickles is going to do. He kind of thinks for a second. Then his face lights up with joy. It worked so well last time. Mending. On what? He doesn't have a tiny teddy bear for you to destroy this time. Him. Fine. What do you attempt to do? Rip the man in half. Uh, okay. Well, you can go ahead and try that. Probably a strength check. I mean, you are pretty big, so maybe you can end up damaging him a little, or at least ripping off an arm or something. I don't know. That would be pretty... Uh, a nat 20. Difficult. Do you rip him in half vertically, like down the middle, or at the waist? DM who has given up on trying to apply logical ends to his encounter. At the waist, said Tickles. At this point, most of the bar has definitely noticed the magic show that is going on. Some of them start to try and leave. Patrick starts a Patricking and blocks the exit. Wounded Knee starts fighting people for drinks and Sassy Pants and Fluffy do a little self-drink service and sit back and watch the inevitable fireworks. Tickles lets out a roar and holds the in-half man in the air above his head, blood and gore dripping down onto him. He turns to the poor, poor lady who just wanted a nice night out and turns all of his attention on her. Want to see a magic trick? I cast Mend. Mend doesn't work on people. You can't just rip a person in half and cast a mend on them. Well, I don't know how long it's going to take for Tickles to realize that. I'm going to go ahead and wait the full ten minutes just to make sure it doesn't work. Cue the same scene as the Shady Tavern magic show, except the crying girl is weeping in a considerably more horrifying fashion, and the bear is a person. While all of this is going on, Patrick and Moon and Nee have started to get bored. They decide it might be time to rough up some jerks who like this place better than their bar. So they start a little mini rampage in the corner. Fluffy decides she wants in and starts to help out. The smart bar patrons notice a momentary safe out at the door. 
But Sassy Pants is paying attention and cast Entangle on the exit just to make sure they stay and finish out the show. I'm sure you can all guess how this is going to end. Hint. It's bad. Time has finally run out and Tickles realizes you can't cast Mend on people. So he drops the two halves of the guy and I ask him what he plans to do now. Combo Prestidigitation with Disguise to make myself look like her date. And while I'm at it, Prestidigitation to make all the drinks that aren't ours taste like poop. Go ahead and roll. Before he can roll, partially because it's so absurd, partially because I'm afraid he will somehow manage to roll high enough to pull it off somehow. Oh my goodness, what do you know? You didn't roll high enough to convince this poor lady that the murderer of her husband, who is a different race and two feet taller than him, isn't her dead husband, who is on the ground next to her. I roll to intimidate. What do you say? I'm your husband. Surprisingly, this doesn't work. At this point, I mostly felt bad for this poor NPC that had taught me I really need to consider what could happen to any NPC I decided to spawn in front of my players. And now I know I will probably have nightmares for playing a part in what happens to future characters. Decide that the large at work yelling that he is her recently murdered husband while effectively wearing his face is probably enough to put her over the edge and have her die of shock. It was time to put her out of her misery. The rest of the group has been escalating the bar fight. About two-thirds of the patrons are unconscious or dead and everyone is involved. Wounded Knee has had a few drinks. Fluffy has eaten a couple people. Wounded Knee has had a few more drinks. Patrick has thrown a couple people. Sassy Pants has physically shown the bartender everything they are doing wrong and also roughed up a couple screaming and crying people trying to escape. A couple patrons actually managed to escape, mostly because someone finally noticed a large group of them trying to fight their way through the entangled vines at the entrance. Someone then decided to set the vines ablaze, stopping the PCs from getting to the few who had already made it past. This actually worked out in favor of the PCs, as I was hoping they would realize that maybe people spreading word of how terrible Mexico Moe's was would be good publicity for their bar. But this was a more pleasant surprise than something the PCs had been trying to do. Overall, it was a really fun encounter for everyone involved. I had a blast and the PCs all got some of the fun they wanted out of the bar. Tickles had one of his most shining moments in the campaign. Great fun for all involved. Except for that poor couple. That will haunt me for a while. The next place we visit is the River Camp. Think Truck Rest Stop, but in Dungeons and Dragons time. This is a spot along the river that splits the Tavern of Taverns in basically two. It acts as a general community area where near-expiring barrels of ale are dropped off from the surrounding bars. This is one of the less populated places in the campaign, but Patrick still found a couple innocents to go punch. Now again, this was a while ago, so I don't expect anyone to remember, but way back in the day, that hermit the group ran into sent them on a quest to go find the perfect ingredients for his famous microbrew. Well, this is the place he sent them. As they approach the river, they notice a curious contraption up above the central fire pit. As they get close, they notice the ingredients they are looking for are inside the little machine hanging over the fire. While approaching, Fluffy begins to start growling. Sassy Pants starts to get uneasy, and the rest of the group starts to hear mewing. They approach, and upon closer inspection, the machine is set up so that the group can remove the ingredients with very minimal effort. But four adorable kittens will plunge into the flames. I was ready for this encounter. It was going to be fun. Sassy Pants and Fluffy are ready as well. Let them die, even if they don't get the ingredients. Okay, fine. Kind of to be expected. But we have all the other players. Going on murder sprees, sure. Who hasn't in a D&D game? But kittens? Oh boy. If you don't already have a predisposition to hurt some kittens, it isn't going to be easy, no matter how mean you are. It just isn't the kind of thing you do. The other players are going to have to RP with Sassy Pants to calm her down. Maybe figure out what to do with Fluffy while they deal with the issue. I'm excited to see how they go about getting the kittens out without destroying the ingredients. This is likely going to be one of the better problem solving and RP encounters in the adventure. And I had forgotten who I'm playing with. I was wrong. I was terribly wrong. I was wrong earlier about them not being unbelievably terrible people again. Before I had finished describing, it was how to get the ingredients out, and just that the kittens would die, everyone is on board. I at least got to attack them with some cat people that had been waiting in the bushes, but they were dealt with without too much trouble, and the kittens were gone. They head back and turn in their horribly acquired goods. The hermit gladly accepts the ingredients and starts brewing. 
The PCs get some minor bonuses in the next couple of fights at no cost, except for some sleepless nights for their DM. Under the Table The next bar that the group decides to check out is called Under the Table. It is owned by an NPC who loves his puns. Basically, the owner spent a lot of money buying a bunch of lumber and built a gigantic table that he built the tavern under. So, everyone can drink you under the table. Get it? Luckily for the PCs, they arrive just as the drinking contest starts, and they don't have to listen to the NPC's barely functioning puns for very long. As they approach, they are greeted by NPC copies of themselves, including a cat animal companion for the enemy druid. This was basically a pretty fun encounter to have the players do skill checks against themselves. Patrick vs. Bizarro Patrick got to fighting pretty quickly. Same for the cat and Fluffy. Tickles lasted a little longer before using some magic tricks to cheat and get his counterpart out of the contest. Rather surprisingly, Wounded Knee did not do that great. He ended up just drinking with his counterpart after a few rounds and getting distracted from the actual contest. Luckily for the group, Sassy Pants was on top of it and drank her counterpart under the table. The group got a few more minor bonuses to future fight. After turning in their items for the drinks, the group decides it's time to go and explore a little more. They are ready for some good old-fashioned adventuring. The Pits. The first bar the PCs went to is called The Pits. They learned it was well known around the tavern for having a pretty good survival challenge. They decided to participate and attempt to scale across some cliffs. Pretty much everyone was super lazy after they found out only the first few cliffs had ropes and just climbed down to fight the beer gators below instead of trying to traverse them. This encounter was accomplished with relatively little issues. The Beholder's Hangover. This was the first major puzzle for the PCs to solve. It was based upon the Beholder puzzle in the 3.5 adventure, Return to the Temple of Elemental Evil. This bar was well known for having a legendary drink with liquor so strong it can give a Beholder a hangover. Of course, the PCs were interested in getting one. To get this legendary beverage, the group had to match up the floor tiles with an image depicted on the floor. After some quick searching, Tickles noticed that some of the tiles weren't in the right spot. I thought this encounter was going to be over instantly. Luckily for me, they weren't quite certain how to get them in the right areas. So they started trying to interact with them to see if they could figure it out. This led to hilarity via PCs jumping up and down on tiles, PCs getting put to sleep by a tile multiple times by the same tile, looking at you, wounded knee, PCs standing in place, PCs attempting to shake hands, PCs attempting to shake hands while jumping over tiles, or just jumping over tiles becoming terrified of tiles, attacking other PCs at a tile's insistence, and to top it all off, being damaged by a tile, then stepping on the same tile and almost dying because it damaged them again. I'm looking at you, Patrick. And attempting to push and hurt another PC who was over by that last tile. I'm looking at you, Tickles. Eventually, the group figured out what was up. You literally only had to pick up the tiles and move them. Everyone had a grand old time. This was a super fun encounter. I really recommend using puzzles if possible. Beard and Berlickerfast. I may have mentioned something about puns earlier. Even I have to admit the name of the bar was a major stretch. This place is exactly what it sounds like. Well, not sounds like, but... It's a bed and breakfast. Owned by a lovely old ancient couple. They have been married together for ages, are probably on the brink of death, but they keep on keeping on, and sell a place to sleep with breakfast food and a Bloody Mary in the morning. Now... You may have noticed. I said they were a lovely couple. Wounded Knee sure did. He asked me exactly how lovely. I made the rookie mistake of saying the old lady noticed his interest and started hitting on him. PCs have no shame. This eventually led to the three of them heading up to the bed section of the business a bit early. Wounded Knee provided way too many details about how exactly that setup went. Tickles, Sassy Pants, and Fluffy all tried to ignore the sounds that started coming from upstairs and just intensely concentrated on their scones and the various cat doilies around the room. Patrick, on the other hand... Patrick heard some sounds. He thought he should investigate, so he went upstairs. As he got closer, he noticed it sounded like grunting. Grunting usually means fighting. Patrick likes fighting. So he was charging up the stairs before the rest of the PCs could say anything to stop him. Patrick sprints up the stairs, and what does he see? Well, to his simple barbarian eyes, it appears that two old people from before are anger wrestling against Wounded Knee, just like the camp elders used to do at night. Patrick doesn't like that. It sure sounds like those old people are hurting his friend. Patrick doesn't like that at all, and Patrick goes into a rage. The situation quickly escalates with Patrick punching some old people, Wounded Knee punching some Patrick, Patrick punching some Wounded Knee, and so on. Luckily for the old people, 
They are pretty tough. They do run a business in the Tavern of Taverns, after all, and are holding their own. That is, until the rest of the crew shows up. They don't really want to kill these old people. But they would rather not lose Patrick or Wounded Knee. Sassy Pants and Fluffy go into protective mode and start getting Wounded Knee relatively safe on the other side of the bed. The wife follows them on their side of the room by the window. Tickles decides it's time to do what he does best and thinks perhaps distracting Patrick is the best way to end the situation. Want to see a magic trick? As fire shoots from his hands. Unfortunately for him, this room is also covered in cat doilies. Patrick does get distracted, but mostly from the old man who is on fire and the flames are quickly spreading around the room. The party starts to panic at this point. The flames are keeping them from the door. It's looking more and more dangerous every second, and we're about to have a TPK, because I said these nice old people were a lovely couple. Luckily, Sassy Pants' cool head once again prevails, and she is the first one to think of jumping out the window, taking Fluffy with her. Notice they didn't forget about her this time. They manage to catch Wounded Knee as he jumps out following, which is good since he was actually injured from both the fighting and the fighting. That leaves a raging Patrick and Tickles and the old lady upstairs in a burning room. While Patrick is attacking Tickles, Tickles manages to get him in the general direction of the window, and Patrick is raging enough he isn't really on point and is convinced he should leap out the window. He takes some damage, but he's alright. Tickles had taken some damage, and he needs to leave soon. Sassy Pants and Fluffy are busy with Wounded Knee. Patrick isn't going to be of any help. It's just him up here. Him and the old lady. My PCs are terrible people. Tickles grabs the old lady, takes a running leap out of the window, explosion behind him in style, and decides to use her as a cushion to soften the blow, which works, mostly. He survives, at least. I can't say as much for the squished under a half-orc sorcerer old lady. So, yeah. Never say anything to your PCs about NPCs being anything that could remotely ever be considered attractive. It never ends well. The Town Hall. Prepare for another excellent example of PCs not doing what you expect them to. Though at this point, I'll admit that not preparing for this was my own fault. The fun of this bar was that every day someone is elected mayor and gets to set drinking rules for the bar. The group showed up right in time to participate. I had it all set up where the group members would have to politicize it up between the different groups, do some role-playing, and speak to each group's interests, and keep an eye on what each other were up to. There were five groups. The Low Downers, the Sad Sallies, the Apathetics, the bright sides, and the high uppers. Members of each respective group went from extremely sad to obnoxiously happy. Each PC would have a chance to garner support from a group, with their opposite losing support for them. Working with a group with no current support would generate more support than sharing a group with another person would. There were going to be three rounds with the PC with the lowest amount of overall support voted out first. First thing they did that I wasn't expecting was Tickles and Wounded Knee pretty much instantly formed an alliance with Wounded Knee accepting the newly created Vice Mayor spot for a cut of any winnings and some drink. Sassy Pants first considered forming an alliance with Patrick, but quickly decided the less share causing Pact with Fluffy that she could completely control would be way easier. Tickles joined the bright side, Wounded Knee and Fluffy, high uppers, Sassy Pants, the sad sallies. I was super happy with this. It was awesome. The group split up and started doing tactics I hadn't even considered. They considered their characters' strengths and weaknesses, got some nice roleplay in. It was awesome. I didn't expect this at all. You may also note I haven't said anything about what Patrick is up to. That's because he also did something I hadn't planned for. Patrick decided to kill all of the lowdowners. Because why not? It's an evil group of politicians typically don't support barbarians' interests. So, surprise, surprise, Patrick is out of the running, but quickly changed the dynamics of the political sphere by completely murdering the lowdowners. Tickles and Wounded Knee quickly saw the strength in the diplomatic strategy of hiring the Barbarian to hit people until they vote the way you want them, or they die, and stuck to their guns for round two, keeping their happy people lead. Sassy Pants and Fluffy saw the end coming and decided just to accept their fate and hang out with the Apathetics. Tickles and Wounded Knee greatly enjoyed the spoils of their victory, and were mostly willing to share them with the party. Everyone had some glorious times drinking and partying and overall had a grand old time, and Tickles and Wounded Knee won some bragging rights for life. Overall, this was a super fun encounter for everyone, and a great reminder for me to never expect things to go as expected, and just let the PCs attempt to solve the problems how they want to. It always ends up way better and more interesting when it goes that way. The town hall also decided electing outsiders to even temporary positions of power was a terrible idea, and voted unanimously to modify their constitution. The Milk Saucer This was the main cat person bar in town, 
The group wasn't necessarily welcome here, but the bartender was there to run a business and told everyone to be chill and that this one wishes to trade. The group cautiously walked past Piano Cat, a very grumpy-looking cat person, a majestic snow leopard sitting in a corner, a tiger with a kerchief eating some cereal, and a cat in a bee costume. The group gets their drinks, some form of milk-alcohol mixture, and the bartender asks them if they wish to pay tribute. Fluffy and Sassy Pants decide they want nothing of it, and Wounded Knee just decides he only wants to drink. Patrick and Tickles decide to see what this tribute's all about. They are taken to the back, and after depositing some of their gold into a jar, they are taken to a short line. In front of the two PCs are a few cats taking turns sitting in a golden cardboard box, with a look of pure enlightenment on their faces. Patrick agreed to go first. I asked him to make a will save, and he succeeded. He feels a little warm and comforted sitting in the box, and his allotted time goes by slightly faster than expected, but nothing happens. Tickles, on the other hand, sits in the box and instantly faints. From his point of view, blinding light appears and a shadowy figure approaches. Patrick watches Tickles sit in the box and pass out, knocking the box over. Patrick sees many angry cats. Patrick starts punching. Sassy Pants and Fluffy see a reason to bite and punch dumb cats. They proceed to do so until the Cat Lord's guard shows up and takes the unconscious wounded knee and Tickles until they are eventually overwhelmed by sheer numbers. Tickles sees a bright light, then a shadowy figure. Then the shadowy figure has a tail, then cat ears, and a crown. At this point, I took Tickles' player into another room and provided him with the option from the Cat Lord. Greetings, half-orc. You seem like you may have some potential. Ditch your friends, and I will give you a quarter of my kingdom as a reward. Help me murder them, and you will be pleased. Betray me, and you will know pain like you have never known. Plus, your friends are lame and annoying, and you probably want to kill them anyways. And this is when I decided I would probably never put the player behind Tickles in charge of any section of my will or trust my life with him, because he pretty much immediately was on board with betraying the group. Once again, the deal with the moral consequences before making any decision like a normal person would section of the RP was a lot shorter than I was hoping. Then Tickles woke up to the Cat Lord's Jail. So remember when the cellar turned into one of the hardest puzzles the group had to deal with by accident because the players were terrible? Well, this one turned into one of the hardest puzzles the group had to deal with by accident because I was an idiot as a DM. So the setup for this was supposed to be fairly easy. The adventurers are all thrown into a round jail cell in the middle of a medium-sized amphitheater. In the middle of the cell is a 40-foot pool. As the party is locked up, the cats activate the lock with a magic key. That is activated and tied to the party's life force. The key is thrown into the pool in the middle, as the cats have always done, and they sit down to heckle and make fun of the prisoners until they starve to death without being able to get out. See, this was supposed to work out because the cats are dumb and the thought of being able to swim down and get the key had never crossed their minds. The difficulty was supposed to be in finding the correct key in the pile of keys at the bottom. I thought it was a decent puzzle. It was supposed to be pretty short, kind of humorous, and let the players feel cool. If you haven't figured it out, the easy solution is casting Detect Magic to see the active magic key in the pile, then make a couple swim checks, get it out no issues. Simple, right? Unless none of your players have Detect Magic magic. Neither of the spellcasters had it. I, to be fair, it was their first time playing. Heck, maybe I never even told them it was a spell. But come on. Though ultimately, I will have to admit the failing wasn't mine. And I should have checked their spell list first before developing the puzzle, as I always do now. Luckily, after some floundering on my part, the players were pretty cool and developed some neat solutions to break out. Patrick tried smashing the lock. Fluffy and Sassy Pants scared some cats. Tickles and Mundani tricked some cats into getting close enough, and eventually the group was able to force the cats to let them out. Beer Run This was one last fun little bar on the way to the Cat Lord's castle before the final fight. It was a pretty fun race against the members with skill checks along the way. On the left path, a jump check, the pretzel vendor cart. Acrobatics check, dodging the crowd, getting all the free pretzels. Ride, mounting and riding the pretzel demon that was summoned by the angry pretzel vendor. Fortitude will save, whichever was higher for the player. And finally, fly, riding the pretzel demon across the finish line. On the right, swim, swimming through the mass of people involved in the race, climbing above the crowd, handle animal, making all the rats that showed up to eat the pretzels and pretzel demon decide not to eat you. Fortitude will save, shots in stealth, successfully using meat shields to sneak over the line without the pretzel demon noticing you. It was a pretty fun encounter, and everyone had a good time. 
the Cat Lord's Castle. The group had finally made it to their destination. This was a large building taking up two plots of land, the biggest the group had seen in the Tavern of Taverns. It was a bunch of cat scratching posts built up into the shape of a castle. The group went in and dealt with the cat minions inside without too much trouble. Nothing much of note happened in those fights besides the party learning why you don't split the party momentarily, and Patrick deciding to continue the last round of his rage instead of saving it. Then the Cat Lord fight in his throne room. This was exactly what I would have wanted. The party had taken a little damage on the way, some spells had been spent, everyone was doing pretty well, but already not at the top of their game. Everyone was working in excellent teamwork and putting out some nice damage. Up until the Cat Lord had lost about a fourth of his hit points. Then, Tickles was amazing. The group didn't actually realize he had switched sides for probably four rounds. It was after the third time that his fire spell happened to land on both the Cat Lord and a couple of the party members that they decided something was up. It was a DM's dream. You could see the other members processing, accepting what had happened, being hurt, and then deciding to go in for the kill. The three bonded and started working together more than they ever had before, and Tickles stopped wasting time hurting the Cat Lord as well. Sadly for Tickles, the power of friendship was too strong, and he and the Cat Lord got pretty well after school specialed. Tickles managed to start running for it at the perfect time, and I was actually cheering for the rest of the group to strike him down, but he got some amazing rolls and managed to run off into the night. Though I won't complain about the potential I was given for a new villain if we ever come back to these characters. The Demon Lord showed up again and congratulated the adventurers on their evil escapades, recanting some of his favorite murders and smites that the group had done. For real, I am super impressed with their play and was just having an awesome time gushing over how awesome they were. He granted them their prize. Each would get to bring their favorite tavern from the Tavern of Taverns with them back to the Primal Plane. At this point, he knows that Tickles was missing. And after the party told him what happened, he stated, Ugh, what a dick. I guess one of you gets his pick as well. The group rolled for it, and Wounded Knee was the lucky winner. The good guys were returned to the plane along with their taverns of choice. So that's the adventures of the group from the Shady Tavern. One of the best, most entertaining, enlightening, and just flat-out blast adventures I've ever had the honor of running. All because I just listened to the stupid things that my players decided they wanted to do. I know a lot of it was dumb, but God was it fun. Your players are the best DMs. Pay attention to what they want. I can pretty much guarantee that it will pay off for you. Some of the best stories are born from the dumbest ideas. Tell me what you think in a comment down below. Before we take our leave, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. All things D&D. Stay tuned for more amazing Dungeons & Dragons content every week.